testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, 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 one, two, three, testing. The light is not good. Can you hear me? Excellent. Welcome everybody to week six. Today we are going to review uh, your five step assignment to make sure that everybody understands the five step assignment method, which is uh, the most important skill you will learn in this course, basically. Yes? And um, I went to Slack and I posted the quiz. Uh, so I think we have three cases, isn't it? Yeah. We have three cases. Yes. Uh, who would like to uh, present case one, case two, or case three? And let me do a poll before we start. Right, I'd like to ask you if it was nobody wants to present. <laughs> Good. Uh, it's not graded, so was the assignment uh, hold on, was the assignment difficult or easy? Okay. Right. Anybody wants to present their group work for one bonus point? No one? No? Okay. No one. No one, no one, no one. Someone? Wait, Mariam, OK. Mariam, would you like to show us your work? Do you see my screen? Anybody? Do you see my screen? Do you see my screen? Share, share application screen. Share. Okay, so I got your assignments for the center. Okay, so I got your assignments here. Right, and this should be test percentage. I recall my information. It's percentage. Right, so everybody's going well. I don't know why you have this attendant here. Um, until they test. Right. So 
So we are here. Uh, the film review was, which was a peer assignment review. I think it didn't work. So, no, nah, doesn't matter. We'll try another time. Right. So, anybody wants to show the work a bit? No? No one? Group three? Okay. Mariam, uh, you, you, would you like to? Yeah, take the microphone and share the screen. Yeah, you can do it. Hi, doctor. Hello, Mariam. Where are you calling from today? Doctor, I will share the screen, but I'm not joining with Chrome. You will share the screen. But I can't share the screen because I'm not joining with Chrome. You I'm cannot share the screen. The ah, okay. Do you want me to share yeah. your screen? And then you explain to us what you did? Yeah, sure. Okay, so you are group three, right? Uh, Mariam, right? Mariam. Mariam, what else? Salem, is that you? Can you see my screen? No. Check the application, hold on. Okay, now, Mariam. Which Mariam are you? Uh, Mariam al Kuwaiti. al -Kabi. listen, al -Kabi. I only have al -Kabi. Salem Ali al -Kabi. Mariam al Kuwaiti. Uh, I'm in the right place. Mariam al Kuwaiti, but I don't see you. I I have Salem al Kabi or Saeed Mohammed. Yeah, Saeed Mohammed. Mohammed. So we'll go to your group. It's group three. Perfect. So I'm gonna download what you did. Thank you, Mariam. Oh, you have an Excel. Wonderful. And you have a stuff. Great, excellent. So just to remind you, uh, this was the assignment, right? So we explained the five-step method, which is has soup steps. And the first case was about, <clears throat> oh, you had four cases. So the first case was about, well, a case that from the book, Second, the same, third, the same, and the fourth was a laptop case. Good. And so, Mariam, let's see. And Mariam, you have submitted case one, case two, case three, and case four. Amazing. And you have embedded an Excel sheet. Is that an image? Okay. Nice. And you put this. Mariam, did, did, did everybody work in your group, or you had issues that somebody doesn't work? Um, to be honest, we all worked. We divided the cases into two because we are eight. So uh -huh. each two okay. worked on a case. So me and I worked on the first case. And, uh -huh. um, Marwa and uh, Mira worked on the second case. Very good. Fatima and the other Fatima worked on the third case. Said and Maryam mm -hmm. worked on the last case. Nice. Did you check? what your friends did in the group, or you just put it all together and that's it? <laughs> um, no, we checked and then we just um, arranged it together. Did you, when you checked, did you see improvements or, or no? I guess they or just, did a great job. They did a great job. Well, that's not very useful because then we cannot learn anything. Okay, Maria, can you read the case to us? Um, so you are a new sales person at a large software manufacturing firm. It is three weeks from the end of the sales quarter and you and your sales manager are sitting pretty. You have both already met your sales quota for the quarter. In addition... Okay, stop, 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 stop. A keyword here is sales quarter. Are you familiar with the sales quota? 
yeah there is like um, what does it mean can you explain for the people that don't know it three months for each quarter yeah. mm -hmm. and um, I don't know how to so explain. when you are in year, when, like... yeah when you're an engineer they pay you they pay you every month right you code you get paid yes yeah but when you're a salesman it doesn't work like that you get a small salary as a base and then they ask you well you should sell this amount every month more or less or every quarter which means three months and that's called the quota and if you don't reach the quota which is what they expect you to sell then your salary is not good it will not you will not receive the extra amount of salary so that your salary is good okay so that's why this system is an incentive system to push the salesman to really work hard and not just be lazy yeah and most people that are in sales have a base salary and then they have the salary that depends on how much they sell or they have the quota which means that they will receive a full salary if they sell this amount of dirhams every year. that's why if you talk to salesmen they're always worried about the quota especially at the end of the quarter because that's when they check if you really sold enough or not sounds good yes yeah. everybody clear with that okay go on keep reading yes okay where did i reach okay in addition you just closed another deal with a new customer for one hundred thousand dollars of software and customer service, this order would put you way over your sales quota for the current quarter. Your manager mm -hmm. suggests that you hold this new order so it gets recorded for the against next next yes recorded yes. against next quarter. She explains that because sales during the next three months tend to slow down. Salespeople frequently miss their quotas and associated sales bonuses for that quarter. Holding this large order to next quarter would help you get an excellent start and almost guarantee that you meet your quota. What would you do? Hoo -hoo! What would you do? So what is the ethical dilemma here, Mariam? Um, so first we did the problem statement from the five steps. No. I, I'm asking you, just relax, just relax. <laughs> what is the ethical, why is this an ethical dilemma? Why is this, are we breaking any rule here or what is the problem here? Uh, it's unethical, you mean, why is it unethical? Or, or not, yes, yes. Um, it's unethical because like it would be a selfish move for us because a customer expects that um, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Mister, no, I uh, I'm from our group. Can I? Uh, so can we answer? Yes. It's um, yeah. Yes. Is because the hold right on, choice is to put. Yes. yes. The decision. So, because okay. this decision will risk the company's uh, income and reputation. Okay, yeah, so this is what I see, and then Taif, you can say what you want to say. Yes, so me. there seems to be there seems to be a rule here, right? That you have to record the sales when they happen, no? There seems to be, it doesn't say, but there seems to be a rule that when you sell something, you record it in the quarter that you made the sale, not in a different quarter, right? Yeah. Otherwise, the company doesn't know what's going on. Right, you're like lying to the company or hiding, right? So, who wanted to say something uh, just a minute ago? Manipulate Did you pay? His records. A excellent. Who's talking? Who's Maria. Talking? Um, Maria. Was okay. Listening. There was somebody from another group that wanted to speak. Um, so Maya, she's in my group and she wants to complete or she wants to add something. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say that uh, the the person, the salesperson, is just between uh, two decisions. Either it's um, the decision is to serve his good, um, which is basically to take the to take that um, service, 
however if uh, however in the second uh, second decision it's uh, it's to postpone it not to hold it and this will uh, this won't serve him however this shows that uh, he is uh, that he is not um, He's not being selfish, first of all, and that he is uh, he's not making the customer wait for the next year. Okay, very, very good, yeah. So to me, what I see is that her boss, so you have a rule, like a gen common sense, that to record the sales when they happen, right? And then you have the boss, her boss, yeah, that says, that advises to not follow that rule and to record the sales in the next quarter, even it happened in this quarter, like because the reasons, right? And so I think the dilemma here is to follow the, the rules of the company or to follow what your boss tells you. It's a dilemma, right? And, and then we have the thing, is it good for you or not? Is it good for the boss or not? Is it good for the company or not, right? Okay, so who wants to explain the analysis? Yes, Sumaya. Yeah, Maria? I should uh, continue. Who's speaking, Sumaya? Yeah, yeah. When she's going. Speak, she, she's going to present the case, and I'm going to uh, um, okay. present the problem statement and the stakeholders. When you when you speak, just say your name before you speak, so we know who you are. Yes. Awesome. Okay. okay let's go. Yes, uh, I'm Sumaya. Um, yes, I've been a part of uh, this case with Maria. So basically, um, the second step, uh, the first step actually is to make the problem statement and a part of uh, uh, creating the problem statement is to identify the stakeholders, the peoples uh, that are affected with the decision. Um, so we concluded that the people that are going to be affected is uh, custom, the salesperson himself. Mm -hmm. And market. Yes. Uh, we said the market since it it's here. a large firm. Ah, you write it here, yeah? Stakeholders, yes? Yeah. Customers. Yeah, yeah. Who is the market? I mean, like the economic uh, market or the, I mean, like the market that is uh, about the sales, the people, the other companies, the competition mm -hmm. with this company. Yeah, so it's going to be affected because it's a large Wait. company. Okay, but this is. This looks like an internal thing. So to me, the stakeholders would be you, your boss, the company, I would say. But, uh, you wrote it. Yeah? But the market, the market, I don't see how the market is, will be affected. Maybe the customer, but how the market, maybe a little bit, but very, very small. Like, is it relevant that we have the market? Yeah, not here? much. No much, then yes. just delete it. Just delete it. Yeah? So we have you, the boss, and the company, and the customer. And the customer, we don't know. Maybe not. Maybe the customer. Okay, go on. Okay, so then we also have to write the alternatives. So, okay, so the here, first wait, wait, hold on, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on a second. So here it's good if you say why. Like you. What, what, obey, 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 or disobey the manager. boss, boss advice, right? Or manager advice, right? This is, this is the problem, right? Yes. So here, if you tell me why you are a stakeholder, it's much nicer to me. Yeah. The boss, why do you think the boss gives this advice to the employee? Why he gives it? Because he might think he has a, his own perspective about the company and how it operates. So he thinks it's a valid or a valuable. Um, Do you think advice. the boss cares about the employee? Is telling him this because she cares about the employee, or maybe he cares about her own quota? His own quota, like any other manager. Right, so he probably has quota related to his people working for him, quota, for her quota, right? So probably yeah. he, she's also have a conflict of interest, like 
telling what's best for the employee, follow the rules, or yeah, it's based don't on follow the, the rules. So we don't know exactly why the boss is saying this advice, right? So we don't know. We don't have enough information. The company, why is it a stakeholder? Because it's the one being affected, right? By the decision. Yes, because someone might break the rules, right? Think about the company. Do you think that if everybody starts recording the sales in different quarters for their convenience, do you think this is good for the company? No. Do you think they can trust the data? Like, no, not. <laughs> so maybe it's not so good, right? <laughs> uh, good. So this is why these three people are um, stakeholders. And maybe the customer, why would the customer be involved? Same, similar situation, no? Maybe if they record the sale in the next quarter, it will affect the delivery speed of the order. Right? Maybe it will be delayed. Yeah. Do you think the customer would like that? No, it wouldn't uh, meet his expectations anymore. Delay because somebody needs a quota number somewhere doesn't sound very good, right? But we don't know these things, but these are potential typical things that happen. So it's good if you, this is much better, right? The stakeholders, now you know why. Yes? Yeah. Okay, gone. So you decided two alternatives. Which are the alternatives? Yes. Uh, postpone the deal to be recorded for the next quarter, mm -hmm. um, which will result uh, into unethical and not socially correct action because according to the Italian, Italian approach, this move is going to be considered a selfish move from which will guarantee um, is my sales volume and sales quota for the next quarter. However, this decision will risk the company's reputation and income since I'm neglecting the customer needs and lowering their expectations. But this will aid to get an excellent start and guarantee uh, the sales quota for the next year. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, it's just uh, the first uh, alternative is to postpone the deal for the next year, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't seem, um, which doesn't seem gets the total happiness for everyone because here, if we think about it, the customer, the, the salesperson is just thinking about how can he gain, the sales quota, how can he get more sales quota? However, he is uh, not, he is denying and he is not uh, caring about the customers, um, the time because customer also, because as you know, time is an, it's a very, uh, a very precious asset. So okay. when he, okay. yes. so when he delays the customer, he's not caring about the customer, thinking about, about himself, which isn't, uh, which doesn't uh, uh, give a uh, give a total happiness to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we were in a normal company, what would be good to do as an employee is to ask your boss more deeper questions, yeah? Like, hey, shouldn't we follow the rules? Or this or that, uh, yes? Uh, see what's the impact of delaying the recording of the sales for the customer. Yes, so in, talk to the customers. Hey, do you mind if we record the sales next quarter? Maybe they don't mind. Then there's no problem, right? So it's very good here in reality. If you were in the company, you would ask questions, right? Yes. And ask, and you would go deeper into these stakeholders and you would say, oh, the customer doesn't mind. Oh, fine, there's no problem then. Oh, the boss told me this because somebody got fired last semester because the quota, he didn't fill the quota. Oh, wow, okay. Or or his friend got fired because he didn't fill the quota. Or So here would be like talking to the stakeholders and finding more information that we don't, we don't have here. And so here there is a problem here in this step is that you have started analyzing. And this step is only if you look at the instructions, just to say the alternatives. 
So one is to record now, yeah. alternative one, and alternative two is to record next quarter. So you have to be very careful with the language, yes? Like super careful with the language. Just that, that's it, keep it simple. Record now, record next quarter. These are the two alternatives that you have, yes? Record now, follow. No, we do have uh, another uh, alternative. From here, I don't see you have other alternatives. What other alternatives? Oh, we have, yeah, we have two alternatives. The first one is to listen to the manager. That's in our B, uh, B alternative. And the A is yeah. not to follow the manager because uh, to satisfy his uh, own service and delay the customer. Okay, but here, uh, Sumaya, you are making a lot of assumptions. Like from this text, yeah, we, we cannot. <laughs> there was not. We don't know. We we don't know. No, we don't know. Like maybe you're making. Try not to make assumptions. So no assumptions here. Yes. So, but, so here, no assumptions. Record now, follow boss advice, record next quarter. Do not follow boss advice. Yes? Mm -hmm. And don't, things like this, selfies, it's better not to write it because we don't have enough information to judge if it's selfish or not. Yes? Mm -hmm. it, yes. It's like, it's a very strong statement saying that, like you have to be very sure and have a lot of data to say that was selfish because we don't have enough data. Yes? Yes, so you're right. Here the step is very simple. This, just record. Record now, follow post advice. Record next quarter, do not follow post advice. Uh, follow company kind of rules that we don't know how, how strong these rules are, yeah? Company accounting rules, yes? And here, it's kind of common sense, which is also a small assumption, yeah? Do not follow company accounting rules, right? Yes, so that, that would be just this, just the facts. Don't, no, no need to judge at this stage, at this stage, yeah? Next one, evaluate. So here, you can go deeper and go into the evaluation, right? What laws, guidelines, policies. So here it'd be good to know this company's code of conduct, right? Maybe you can read it and say, oh my God, it really says here in this line, you should never record a sale in a different quarter, right? So, so that, that would be very good to uh, apply here, yes? Okay, uh, so let's go back. So how did you evaluate these alternatives? Um, hi, doctor, I'm Maryam. Maryam, how are you doing? Okay, so- Where are doctor, you calling from? Sorry? Where are you calling from? Where I'm calling from? Mm -hmm. Okay, go on with the evaluation, yes. Okay. So evaluating the results. So based mm -hmm. on both alternative, we configured from the problem. Mm -hmm. Choosing the one least harmful to the company is the most ethical act. And according the, to the utilitarian approach, in my opinion, uh, mm -hmm. not postponing or keeping the $100,000 is the best ethical choice because this will satisfy customers and benefit the company as well, as the salesperson can call the customer he made a deal with and mm -hmm. uh, can decide for other deals for the next mm -hmm. quarter. It's like mm -hmm. hitting two birds with a stone. And on the other hand, the deal is held for the next quarter. This okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, good. Uh, there's only one problem. I'm sorry. What is it? There's, the problem is that you invoke here the utilitarian approach, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So you say, according to the utilitarian approach, and the least harmful to the company, and you say the least harmful to the company. So what is the utilitarian approach about? According to, to the utilitarian approach, the most ethical choice is the one that does what? Happy, satisfied. Maximizes the happiness of the universe, in yeah. other words, makes creates the most happiness in the world or in the universe, or maximizes, because happiness is very hard to measure, we usually measure dollars or dirhams, right? So we try to convert happiness into dirhams, yes? And then we check each option, each alternative, measuring the dirhams that they create, yes? And then that's how we compare in utilitarian approach. But here you just, so utilitarian approach is the total happiness created. Which outcome, yeah, looks at the outcome. When there is more people going to be happy in option A or option B. But you here, you just say, choosing the least harmful to the company. And you're just looking at the happiness or at the benefit to the company, yes? So that is not utilitarian approach. That is values approach where you say that the company is the most important or it could be common good approach considering the company as your society or your society bubble. Yes, I but utilitarian. Um, Come again. I wrote down the reason why is it like yeah, but do you, do you understand that? It doesn't yeah, match the you understand, but in here, How would you change this? What could, how could you change it? Um, the one least harmful to the company and that will satisfy customers. Okay, so the first thing you need to do here is to tell the other people which ethical framework you are applying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you can say, uh, you can say, well, you can say, we are in a corporate setting, right? This is a cor as a work, right? Yeah. It involves, the stakeholders are mostly related to the company, right? The stakeholders are related to the company, right? Yeah. So customers, employees, right? They, they all are they all are employees employees or customers right yes so it, it doesn't involve society so much right because it's not like we're going to create a pollution in the society or something or so common good approach doesn't apply here so much right and utilitarian approach, we could use it, but I think maybe in this case, you could say- um, The virtue. Virtue and say, well, we will we'll apply the code of conduct of the company, yes? Or you could say common good, and I, I say we are in a company setting, and I'm considering like the company to be like my a small society, Yes, and so I'm gonna choose what is best for the company. Yes, it doesn't mean it's a good idea or a bad idea. Just you're telling me which ethical framework are you applying? Yes. Yeah. Or you could say no, no, no. We we need we need to do what's best for society. Okay. Whatever it is, just explain why. Yes. Yeah. Or no, no. We even though we're in a company. We need to do what's best for the universe and to make as much people uh, as happy as possible. Yes? And, and you can apply various frameworks and see what happens. And, and then you will see, oh, yeah, this framework is not really appropriate in this context. Or this one it is, right? So, yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Okay. So anyway, let's assume we go for the utilitarian approach. Yes. I think that's what the one you used, right? Is that correct? Yeah. 
there are employees. So um, however, I don't know. So you could say because what would apply here in my in my opinion would be common good approach and thinking of the company as as the the common good provider or otherwise the you can say the utilitarian approach which is a very general framework and nobody will say it's very hard to go wrong with the utilitarian approach okay yes? we'll choose the common good for the company good i just bear in mind that common good is usually f reserved for society but yes that's good uh so in, in this case, if you choose the common good approach, common good. Okay. The company, more society in here. Yeah, okay, common good approach, and then what would happen? Um, this, I think, uh, not keeping the $100,000 the $100, is the best ethical choice. Mm -hmm. Because, this because in the com yeah. Because in here, sales person, will um, work on, based on the company's rules mm -hmm. and this will benefit the company because they won't like um, get an internal conflict in the society because and i mean the company because data were manipulated and there will be very, trust. very good there mm -hmm. will be trust among the workers very good very good very good so that's a very simple and good approach. So you could say, you could even apply the common good approach for society. And you can ask, what is best for society to have a company where employees don't follow the rules of their own company? Like they're being, you have rules, you don't follow them. It's like promotes corruption. Yeah. Because you know what happens. You break one rule, and then you break another rule, and then you end up make, break, breaking a big rule, right? Yeah. So you can say that. You can say, look, for the common good approach, if there is this rule, it must be followed. If this rule is not good, they should change it. But as long as there is this rule, they should follow it. And it's very bad for society to have corrupt employees, period. Yeah. Does it make sense? And that's it. You don't have to explain anything else. That's it. Yes? Yeah. You can say is uh, the most ethical is to have a company where the employees follow the rules of the company. What about if you had used the utilitarian approach? What would be the analysis like, look like? That's finding the customer and yeah. with such the customer the salesperson will get a new deal from this customer mm -hmm. he made a deal mm -hmm. with and then the salesperson will also be satisfied with his quota for the next quarter so this mm -hmm. is a utilitarian approach and but here you have to measure a it's good if you measure the money right so in utilitarian approach remember we say what's best for the total amount of happiness, yeah? yeah? So here it's very good if you go for option A, option B, and then you say uh, you, right? Yeah. So option B is to record now, correct? Record now. And option B is later, right? So it's a you, okay, what's best for you? So for your, boss is, your boss is happy, right? Yeah. Um, less stress next quarter, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, if you record later, your boss not happy, right? No, my boss uh, will be happy. I recorded later. Oh, okay. So uh, this is opposite. Yes. Yeah. Like this. And less and stress. The boss will Let's, let's let's okay, let's so play. okay, so let's move the boss things to the boss. So the boss will be happier here, and the boss will be angry with you. So this is might have some consequences for your job. 
uh, company. So record now, nothing happens. But record later, what does it mean? Company will Employee know. don't follow rules, mm. right? Okay, so now you have to compare what is worse, uh, what is less bad. For this? the last next quarter, okay. I guess it would be for later. Yeah, so you have to measure so that the boss is happy. This, this here, yeah? yeah, yeah, that the boss is happy and that you are less stressed. So that these two persons are a bit happy compared to corruption or starting corruption, right? Yeah. So what is dollar value if you have to put, yeah, if you if have to. Utilitarian, utilitarian approach, then mm -hmm. recording later would be the best choice because it satisfies the salesperson and the boss. Mm, yeah, so if we record now, the boss is not happy, I think, right? That's yeah. what happens. If you record later, we have two people happy and... One is not. One is not. Well, one is not, but I'm, can we compare these to happiness or not? Because... Oh, one is not know, one more, like the company. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's hard to say. So here you have to assume things and you say there's no problem for the company and... But just explain to the company why we did this act. Yeah, so here's the dilemma. Do you start breaking rules? Or uh, is how, how do you measure that, right? You could say that... With, um, like a breaking yeah. rules, if I broke rule, then the other... Because um, then the other employee in the company will also break a rule, then this mm -hmm. will, will be like a chaos in a company. Okay, so if you think that is that will create this potential chaos, yes. can create much worse happiness than just two guys being happy for one quarter, yeah. then you say, look, the risk of this going out of control and all the happiness, and happiness that is going, all the problems, that it can create, it's not worth it for just two guys being happy. And so it doesn't matter what you decide as long as you explain it, yes? So I assume that the risk of the company starting not following rules is worse or is greater than the happiness of related to the quota of two persons for one quarter, yes? Yeah. It doesn't matter what you tell me, this or A or B, as long as you make an analysis, we don't have enough information, so you assume, like, I assume this, I assume this, and, or I assume, yeah, that, or you could say, I assume that the impact for the company of two employees not following the rules for one quarter is not significant compared to the uh, reduced stress for the employees. Fine. Sounds good? Yeah. And then, you say, um, I go for option a, B, for example, or option A, it doesn't matter. And then here you're missing a small step, which is, what is it? Implementation plan. How are you going to do it? So here you have to communicate to the stakeholders what you are going to do. So you have to have a plan, communication plan. What have you decided? So you could have a conversation with your boss or send him an email or a phone call and, this, and explain which, which decision are you going to take and why. And the why is the analysis here. Yes? Maybe you read the code of ethics of the company and there you find something or you go for the utilitarian approach or the common good approach and you explain to your boss 
I'm going to do this because this and this and this. And then you tell the company, well, the company will know anyway. So you can explain the company. I don't know. How would you explain the company and to you? And if there were more stakeholders, you have to come up a communication plan. Sounds good? Yeah. So like I would send an email explaining all this and why I'm doing it. Sounds good? And the last step, so this step is very important. If you choose something and you don't explain it, why you're doing it, you will get into a lot of trouble and you will create a lot of unhappiness. And then what can you do? You can go back and you check that what you did happened as you thought, especially if you made assumptions. So one year later or one, the next quarter, you check what happened and if it was a good decision or not. Yeah? Excellent. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So here the key is to, to say, look, I'm going to choose this framework that says that the most ethical choice is this one or the one that maximizes X, Y, Z, and Y. Oh, because in, I'm in a corporate setting, so in a corporation, what applies the most is the code of ethics of the corporation. And I assume that the code of ethics says that we have this rule, and that's, that's why. Done. Good. Yeah. Or you say, I also do a utilitarian analysis, and this is what came out. And because of this, I assume that the company happiness equals to one person happiness, so two to one, fine. I don't mind how you do it as long as you have a logical process. Sounds good? This is not about who actually is right or wrong. It's impossible. It's many, many times it's impossible to find out, but it's good that you have a logical process that you show why you do something. Yes? Excellent. Case two. Yes. Who wants to read it? Sumaya, Sumaya, Mariam. Actually, we'll uh, see Marwa present it. Marwa, you wanna show us your case? Any wait? Anybody has a, co a question? Any questions? Okay, Marwa. No. no, what? Anybody wants to present case two? No? Um, what about case three? Would you like to present case three, um, Mariam? Mm, okay, then. You want to read it first? Um. Your old roommate from college was recently let go from his firm during a wave of employee terminations to reduce costs. You, ha you two have kept in touch over the six years since school, and he asked you to help him to get a position in the IT organization where you work. You offered to review his resume, make sure that it gets to the right person, and even put in a good word for him. However, as you read the resume, it is obvious that your friend has greatly exaggerated his accomplishments at his former place of for, former place of work, and even added some IT-related certifications. Sure, he never earned. What would you do? Mm -hmm. What would you do? Um, okay. Yep. Okay, so first, the problem statement is is very good, but you could you could even go short, shorter. Okay, and uh, like, can you make it shorter? Um, my, okay, my I am friend, a friend, friend, and I asks need to help him get job at With my current company, right? Yeah. Employer. With a 
रिज्यूमे छोड़ते इसे छोड़ते या एंड डू इट छोड़ते एंड मिस मॉर्निंग या सम्स गुड वी डिड इट बिकॉज़ इन द बुक दे जस्ट प्रेफर टू राइट अ प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट विद मोर डिटेल्स and yeah yeah so so yeah so if you yes i agree with you <laughs> um yes and it's much better to have this um so i would always go for this if you can write it uh but a summary a good summary is this one yes yeah like usually in real life you will have 20 pages of what happened so you have to summarize it to 10% right yeah so that's that's good yeah good so that would be like the most extreme summary yes like super extreme like executive summary but which is what happened right my friend your old friend asked you to get a job with a fake resume does it make sense at the end this is what's happening right yeah, yeah. Elite. okay for stakeholders right. the company yeah. the company is a Why? stakeholder because um mm -hmm. the employee which, uh, which is my friend who is my friend i mean um want to benefit the company with anything mm -hmm. because like he has no the company experience. no no why is the company a stakeholder here anybody in the class because he's going to hire him or not so it's that's why oh you mean that okay the company right. would have you have the choice to hire or not and then it's you because you are recommending or not right um it's me because i am either trustful or not to the company and your friend and your friend why that's also affected right yeah. because he's applying for the job because he's the applicant good company because they might hire sounds good yeah. excellent so alternatives go for it okay that's i realize that he has massively massively inflated his qualification and certifications mhm mm Yes. Right. Thank you, Alia. <laughs> My fingers are dyslexic. Hey, Mariam. Yes, doctor. On. Okay. As I go through my friend's resume, I will ask him to be honest with me and admit the true motive for lying in the resume. I will make him aware of the consequences he might face if he continues in the same company or the same behavior since he's a mm -hmm. good friend. Mm -hmm. And like I advise my friend not to do this bad act. Mm, okay, so that's not good for this stage so again so here we want to know the alternatives what are the alternatives to recommend or not right yeah or not recommend that's it this is what you can do you cannot do anything else yes a friend ask you to get a recommendation or not so that's it yeah and then all these belongs to the analysis evaluation part how do you evaluate this um option b is the most ethical not like according to the very good ethics approach okay why because uh, in virtual ethics best reflects moral and again what did you say so with two ethics you have to explain what are your values right yeah what are your values so you would say you you have to choose what are your values or you can say well one of my values is that um what what can you say here moral 
moral and ethics is the same, right? Yeah. You could you could ask for integrity. So you can say. Mm, what about integrity? Integrity. So integrity is that you always act the same way, depending, independent of the situation or the person, right? So, if you were the company, would you like to be recommended a fake resume? No. If you were the hiring manager? Probably not, right? So, you can say, look, one of my values is integrity, and if I was the hiring manager in the company, I wouldn't like one of my employees to send me a fake resume. Therefore, I'm not going to send a fake resume. End yeah. of the story. Sounds good? But you have to explain it. Yes? Yes? So you could say, one of my values is integrity, which is like the cornerstone of, of anything ethical. It's integrity, like not changing your opinion, depending if it's my friend or not, right? And also not having you things done that you wouldn't like, not doing things that you wouldn't like to be done to yourself. Yeah, that's from the slides. So you could invoke those two and you can say, look, I wouldn't like to be sent a fake resume from one of my employees that I trust, right? Therefore, I'm not gonna do it. Sounds good? Can you hear me? Oh yeah, doctor, I was putting a mute, I don't know. This sounds is good, it's very simple, it's, but yeah. just you need to say those words, yeah? yeah? What other frameworks could we use here? Um, the fairness. Fairness, of, oh, very interesting, okay, go on. What is the fairness about? Uh, it's the it treats everyone the same because like not because he's my friend I would recommend his fake resume. Is fairness treat everybody the same? Yeah. No. Well, that's what was written in the book. No, no, it was not. Treat everybody according to their circumstances. Make sense? Yeah. Uh, we saw this picture. So if I treat everybody the same, this would be the fair choice. Yes? Yeah. But fairness approach is actually this one. We say equity, which is that everybody has the same opportunities. Yes? Yes. So the fairness approach is sometimes people say treat everybody the same, but what they mean is, what it means in reality is treat everybody so they have the same opportunities. And this means treating everybody different according to their height in this case, or their age in this case. Sounds good? Yeah. yeah. So sometimes you will, it's a very, there's about a bit of confusion because people talk about equality. So equality means that, one box for everybody. But fairness and equity means uh, different boxes depending on your circumstance. Yes, good, awesome. So in this case, uh, whoopa, where are we? Uh, here, right. So the fairness approach, what could you say about this? I just said it, and uh, I won't recommend the fake resume uh, because the one having the fake resume is my friend. Yeah, so here you could apply the fairness framework and say, okay, I, the fairness framework here would say, that you send the fake resume to the boss, to your HR, yeah? So that if your friend has the same opportunity, 
of employment as anybody else. This is not This fair. is what the explain me why. Because um, other employees had the opportunity with their resume and with mm -hmm. their own efforts. While my friend, he just faked a resume to get this opportunity and to ah, work. Ah, very it. well. Okay. So you would say everybody should have the same opportunity, everybody that follow the legal rules. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not fair for the people that follow the legal legal rules that somebody that doesn't follow them and has a fake resume has the same chance. Perfect. Very good. Yes. Good. Shall we move? And then don't forget the next steps, which is implementation. How are you going to communicate this, especially to your friend? Right? How would you do it? Uh, Mario? Is it Mario? Yeah, I'm Mario. How would you do it? How would I implement a decision? Yeah. Based on both approaches or one? Uh, on the virtue ethics. Or whatever you want, yeah. Okay. Okay, according to the fairness approach, and I won't recommend my old roommate resume. Yeah, but how are you going to communicate here? Here's the implementation. You don't need to explain to me all the analysis. What you need to tell me is how are you going to communicate I, I your decision? Yes. Okay, I would go to my old roommate and I'll just tell him that his resume um, doesn't represent him as a person and that he won't be suitable for my company because my company is looking for an employee with a specific qualifications mm -hmm. that he doesn't has. Mm -hmm. And I'll just tell him to search for another company and first of all to edit his resume to, to suit his own qualifications. This is, this is very difficult. So one thing is your decision, and the other thing is how you communicate your decision. doesn't mean that you have to explain all your analysis. Sometimes, for example, if you have a five-year-old kid involved in, in your problem, you cannot explain to him virtue ethics approach, this and that. It doesn't work. <laughs> so, so sometimes it's better to say a white lie and say, hey, uh, we're not hiring anymore. I'm sorry. Yes? Or if it's a very good friend, if it's a real friend, you could say, hey, is this resume correct? What's going on, right? I cannot send this resume, it's fake. They will find out, it doesn't make sense, okay? Yes? Yeah. So the, the, doesn't mean that you have to tell the truth about your analysis. Sometimes it's more politically correct or it's easier and different stakeholders may, might need different communication styles, right? So that doesn't mean you have to say, hey, I did this analysis and this. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make sense? Yeah, I would be direct to the point with him. Yeah, I would say, hey, um, is this correct? Or what's going on? And maybe he will say, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. And that's it. It's enough to have a small talk like that. Yes? Uh, so think about what is the best communication strategy to communicate. Um, good. Wonderful. And then you could, check, you could check with your friend and see if he found a job with his new not fake resume or not or whatever, but that's not related to the case. Case number four. Who wants to read it? Um, yes, somebody? Say you're fine, thank you. Anybody else? Somebody else wants to do case number four? Yes, Maria. Doctor, um, I'll check with Samaya. Samaya. So, being ethical doesn't mean that you have to um, not be diplomatic. Yes. So, 
Right. Uh, so you boss at the company as you to buy a thousand laptops for a thousand employees. You have two options, A and B. So very good problem statement. In the Excel sheet, question mark, question mark. Wonderful. So let's go to the Excel sheet that I have downloaded. Uh, Excel sheet, guess what? Well done. Right. We couldn't find solver. You have a solver? Why? Okay. All right. So Maya or Maria? Yes. Number of employees, 1,000. Okay. So can you explain the Excel to the class? Okay, doctor, I will try to explain it. Yes, go on. So basically, there's two, uh, there's two, the company has two options. There's option A or option B. Mm -hmm. The number of employees are 1,000. And yeah. uh, yes, so there are a thousand employees for the company. The cost for the company, cost for each employee is 1,000K. And yeah. the income generated is 2,000K. Okay, so, so it's either we choose option A or option B. Mm -hmm. We look at uh, option A. Um, okay, so if we look at option A, doctor, one second, okay? Yeah, no, it's complicated. Um, um, no, uh, I just wanted to open the document itself. So I don't see any formulas here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so yeah. Thousand employees. So there's thousand yeah. laptops and there's th uh, thousand employees. And there's two options. The first option, option A, is the laptop's cost is 1,000 euros, and it's yep. cost. However, mm -hmm. the option B, the laptops are uh, less costly. They are 600 euros, mm -hmm. but they are slower. Okay. They're slower. So, and how much is slower? Um, they are 5% slower uh, from So we assume, option. or the problem says, mm -hmm. that they will waste 5% of their working time exactly. because the slower laptop. Okay. Yeah, so the efficiency for the option B, it's going to be less by 5%. So it makes mm -hmm. it 95%. However, the efficiency for option A is 100% uh, because they're not wasting any time. Okay, so if we and see... Mm -hmm. Yeah, go on. Yeah, so if we see option A, so the benefit uh, per employee... So we can see in year one, the cost of each employee is 1,000. And the laptop price is 1,000. So the cost of each employee with the laptop to the company is going to be 101,000. If two years, we're going to multiply it by two. Right. So where does this 201000 come from? Uh, to be honest, doctor, this uh, this part of the case was not done by me. It yeah, was done I, I by other it. members, so, let, so I'm not let's sure. Let's do it. Maybe. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Somebody can help here. So the cost per employee to the company equals two years multiplied by 100K, right? That's the cost, yeah? So that's in thousand dollars, yeah? So I'm going to add two more zeros. One, two, three. And I'm going to add here accounting in dollars. Let's say that. Sounds good. So you're doing a cost per employee analysis. That's called unit analysis. That's, that's very good. And the benefit of the employee for two years is correct. And the cost is the same. Ah, you added the cost of the laptop here. I see what you're doing. Ah, OK plus the cost of the laptop, very smart. But since we're in accounting, you already have the cost of the laptop here, so you don't want to have a total running here. So just keep it clean, just keep it clean. The cost is the same for in both cases. 
because the cost is already here, okay? So don't, don't add the same number two times in the same column because uh, it's confusing. And then you have the benefit, yeah? So if it's a cost, it should be a negative number, right? It's a negative number. And this is also a negative number, and this is a negative number. And the benefit is a positive number, and it's $200,000 per year per employee. We're doing a two-year analysis. You should explain that. And here, you lose 5% efficiency, right? So this would be at 95% efficiency of this. That is correct. And here, you do the total. And the total is benefit plus cost plus cost of the laptop, correct? And in this case, the benefit, I just extend the form, is exactly the same number, very good. And so in option A, the company net profit, right? Net net, in this case is 1999, and the other is 179. So what is more ethical? So here you can use, you can say utilitarian approach. Yes, there is more utility, more happiness, more utility in option A than option B, considering two years framework. Fantastic, wonderful. Does this make sense? Yes? So alternatives, A and B, uh, analysis, you say, According to the utility, I choose the utilitarian framework because here we're measuring uh, work, dollars. And according to this analysis, I assume this, this, I assume that this and this. And for each employee, clearly uh, option A is uh, $20,000, $19,600. So $19,600 more profitable for the company than the option B. Therefore, it's more ethical, yes? And it's fantastic, and then how you communicate that, so you could just show this Excel to the management, say, hey, look at this, what do you think? It's totally worth it to spend a, a bit more money on some laptop than, than not that, and then this is a very compelling analysis, right? And if you wanna make, make it more compelling, Multiply by the number of employees, and it's it's amazing. Another way to storytell this, and for those of you in the data visualization and storytelling class, what you could do, which is very awesome, is how many days uh, after how so option A is more expensive at the beginning, but after how many days you already recover the money, right? So <laughs> if you divide this minus this, you have this, and you divide this, if you divide this by two years, which is about 700 days, right? You have $28 per day. So after how many days it pays to have an expensive laptop, right? So you would take the $400 difference and divide it by how much money how much more money you earn per day. And you can say, look, in 14 days, you already recovered the money of the laptop for one employee. And this is a very good storytelling that no manager can say, no, no, I don't want to do it. Yes, so that would be the biggest. Excellent, so questions? All right, so did you enjoy this uh, exercise? Did you enjoy the exercise? Yes, no? Do you find it useful? Mohamed Ahmed, why not? What happened, Mohamed? Anybody has something to say? No? You didn't enjoy it? Okay. So for the next class, uh, it was hard to decide. Okay, that's Khadija. We don't like to work. <laughs> Okay, interesting. Uh, but you have had a lot of time to do this. I mean, it's this is very useful, I think, in my opinion. Uh, yes, okay. 
Okay, well, hold, I'm going to make a poll. Uh, I have five steps. Useful. Okay. Fantastic. And um, let's do one more. <laughs> no, okay. Um, interesting. Only two people. Uh, okay, hold on. Pauline, you don't want to do one more? Really? You think you have it? You think you can go to the exam and get an A? Okay, so I haven't graded. You want to make it alone? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, optional. We can do an optional one. How's that? Yeah? Okay, hold on. Shall we do a. Uh, we need to do one more five-step analysis. Before that, do you want to improve your submission? So now that you have seen what would be a good analysis, do you want to improve your submission? Okay. So I will let you improve your submission. Right. And we need to do one more to make sure that you get this, OK? Uh, so this is not a question. I'm just telling you. But I let you choose. How do you want to do it? Individual groups or you choose the group? So let me set another, another poll. Next five step exercise uh, individual. In random groups, self enroll. Okay, and we are out of time. So if you go to Blackboard, and we're finishing now, a, you have here, ah, God, it expired. You have here. Uh, groups called W6, which means here. So you go here and you enroll any group you want. It's manual. If you don't enroll any group, you will not be graded for this exercise. Okay. But as I told you, it's easy to get an A in these exercises, so it's good for your stuff. Okay. And we'll stop here and I'll see you next week. Ciao, ciao, everybody. Attendance, everybody was here, 57, perfect. See you soon, see you next week. Ciao, ciao. If you have questions, you can stay a bit longer in the class. All right, and good job, group number three. Remind me to give you a bonus point to Sumaya, Sumaya and Mariam. Well done. Yes, yes. Mohammed, you can speak in the microphone. Well done, Sumeya and Mariam. Thank you for today's help in the class. Uh, Mohammed, yes, you can speak now. Uh, Mohammed, you ask a question? How can we study if we have quiz? Uh, you have quiz oh, in this subject, or what do you mean? When is your quiz? There is quiz. Yes, we should do a quiz soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I forgot. Thank you. Uh, we should do a quiz soon. So I was thinking that when is a good time for you guys to do a quiz? Very good. Very good point, actually. Yeah. Uh, Let's do this. Um, I will put a quiz. OK, when, when do you want the quiz? Uh, 
Tuesday, fifteenth, or next Sunday. All right, so we'll do quiz next time. Uh, Mohamed, no, there are slides to study and there is the book. And so in this class, if you've been in the beginning, we said that if you want an A, it's not just the slides, it's also the book and the lectures. Yes, and why do you say there are no slides? What do you mean? Can somebody share with Mohamed the slides, please? Awesome. Okay, so next Sunday we'll do a quiz. I will, thank you, Alia. I will um, send uh, an announcement. So. Great work, everybody. Uh, remember to enroll your preferred group. If you don't enroll, you will not be graded in this assignment, it's fine. Uh, the next one, five steps. I totally recommend you you do this one as well. Super useful if you want an A in this group, in this course. All right, that's it for today, and I'll see you next uh, next next week. Thank you, Alia. Good. So next Sunday, it's gonna be Sunday. Let's see. Sunday 21, quiz, APTP 370. Awesome. All right, awesome. Good job, everybody. Other questions? Anybody have some question? No, okay. Right, all right. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Hostie, ¿qué estás, eh, estás cuinan?
who who is in the room still? Who's, who's in the room, guys? The class is over. I know you love the class, but it's over. Halas. Why is this not stopping? 